For now, let us go to the phone lines and welcome in the Bellator president. Man, it was a very important, very busy day on Saturday, very busy week to come. The one and only Scott Coker joins us. Scott, how are you? I'm doing great, Ariel. How are you? I'm, I'm doing great. And Scott, right off the bat, I want to thank you. Not only... Um, you know, for, for, for you being on the show today, but you've given us a lot to talk about on the program today because you have this event, it's a stack card, you're switching networks, but you've given, you know, uh, talk radio, whatever you want to call what we do, we like to look for little things, we like to harp on things. And when we're talking about a fight card for a long time, you know, the storylines start to dry out. But on Friday, you gave us a whole new storyline to talk about because you put the Chael Sonnen Rampage Jackson fight in the main event over the title fight. And this, I will admit, I'm not, I'm not going to hide from it. I was fired up and I don't think it's the right call. Can you explain to the audience <laughs> why this is the right call? Because I am 100% against this decision. And, and for the most part, I think you make the right calls. But this time, I think you got it wrong. Well, listen, you know what? We never came out and said that which fight was going to be first. So in all fairness, I think that you have to give us that pass. Okay. And then uh, I think that, you know, that you guys said that, uh, well, this fight, or you assumed that that fight was going to be last. And uh, and it kept went either way. But you know what? There's a lot of people that do, um, you know, a lot of, uh, I don't know, I won't say analytics and things like that up at Bicom. And, and uh, it came down saying that, hey, we failed that this should be the last fight. So, hey, when TV says this is what they want, then that's what they get. But Scott, I, I'm a traditionalist. I'm old school. And I feel maybe we assumed, and maybe that was wrong on our part, but the title fight, I feel, should always be last. And especially when you have Rory that you paid so much money for and Douglas, who did so great. Isn't it kind of just a no-brainer that the title fight goes on last? And it's maybe the best title fight in Bellator history. Well, I can tell you this. The beauty of this event is, that, look, you get to watch both fights, and it's all free live on Paramount Networks. Right? Yeah. So you get to sit there and watch both. You don't have to, you don't have to decide which one you want to watch first. And so, you know, at the end of the day, you get to sit there and watch both. So to me, it, it works. I mean, to me, I'm happy with the decision. We're going to move, we're going to move forward. And, and by the way, both fighters, you know, like I'm talking about Lima and, and, and Chael and, those, and Rampage and, and, you know, they, they were like, yeah, it doesn't matter. You know, to me, they just want to fight, you know, they want to fight and have a great showing. And, uh, you know, like I said, you get to sit there and you'll be able to watch both fights for free live on Paramount. And, uh, you know, you don't have to worry about which one comes first. Uh, with all due respect, I think they were being nice to you when they said they didn't mind. I think deep down, I, th I think they were being sort of, you know, uh, respectful of the fact that you're their boss and uh, they don't want to make a big stink. Well, here's the thing. You know what? When I think, when I think about your, your uh, lineup today, Errol, come on. It's like it's like a strike force reunion, man. You should have had yes. me on earlier. I should have been before some of these guys. Wow. But, I mean, it's like uh, no I'm joking. I'm joking. It's like look, I, I'm I'm so proud of of uh, some some of the accomplishments that the the guys in strike force have made throughout all the years. But uh, it's like a strike force reunion. It's true. You know, I didn't even think of that. DC Rockhold. Uh, Chris Cyborg. I mean, it's really a who's who, and it's kind of fitting. I'd even plan it this way, but it it, it comes just a couple of days after the uh, five year anniversary of the last show. Did you remember that? Like, what did, did it cross your mind? January twelfth, two thousand thirteen, the last show in Oklahoma City. Boy, I tell you, that's something that was uh, you know that was that was a tough day for me, man. I love Strike Force. That was like you know that was my baby, and and yeah. uh, you know we we it, you know we we had the last day. I know it was in January. I didn't know the exact date, but. Um, you know, I know that uh, Ryan Grab was on there, our, our guy right here at uh, Bellator, and and uh, CG. I think he was probably, you know, he was probably, I don't know, he was in his diapers, eighteen, nineteen years old at the time. Yeah, yeah he was in his diaper. So, <laughs> you know, but um, you know, at the end of the day, it was, it was, uh, you know, it was, a, it was a great run, man. I love that company. But think about all those great fighters that we came out of there. It was a fight factory, and that's what we should call a fight factory. Uh, you know, uh, it's interesting because I was I, I went back and looked at our last interview at that show, and and you had a smile on your face and you were saying all the right things. But deep down, like, how would you describe how you were feeling? Were you sad? Were you kind of happy it was over because it was a bit weird at the end with Zufa running the show? Like, can you put yourself back, you know, five years ago in Oklahoma City? What was going through your mind as as like, I think we were yeah, the last I mean, ones in the media room? Honestly, yeah, honestly, it was like a um, uh, you know once once you know Zufa took over. Uh, so I started taking out some of the fighters. It was never the same company in my, in my opinion. And so, uh, you know, uh, there was a certain amount of, you know, like, okay, you know, like it's, it's time to move on now and move on with my life and, and, and move forward. But, uh, but yeah, you know what, when, when we saw the company, it was a, it was a tough day, man. It was a sad day. And, and that last fight, it was something, uh, you know, I'll never forget. It was like a, a historical point. And we put a period 
uh, in your life. And, and then, you know, then there was, uh, you know, the fights or well, not the fights, but the, the time that was post the last event. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, it was something I was proud of. Cause Aaron, think about all those great fighters we came out with. I mean, half three quarters of the guys who were on your radio show today were from strike. <laughs> Even Joe Romero was from strike wars. That's right. Even Joe so, Romero. That's right. So, you know, to me, it's like, like something we're proud of. I think we were great star identifiers with great star builders. And that's what we're doing over here at Bellator. And that's what you're going to see this Saturday night. And live on free. It's free on Paramount Network. Tune in. How do you feel about the switch to Paramount? Are you worried at all that there's a there's a rebranding going on, that it's not the same network, that Bellator might get lost in the shuffle? Give me, uh, like, uh, honestly now, are you a little bit scared about this? I hate change. I get nervous about change. What about you? <laughs> no, listen, I, I'm, I'm actually very excited about it because uh, when you have, uh, you know, the ownership group that we have uh, at Viacom and, and the things that they are, they're doing around the world, not just domestically, Arab, but around the world, I mean, they are buying up networks, you know, buying up, they just bought and started a new, a new network in, in Italy. And they just bought a new network in, in India and they're buying networks around, around the world. And so to me, we're always going to have a home in different, different uh, countries around the world. But, um, you know, the way I look at it, it's like, uh, it's going to be a premium channel to do some great original programming. Uh, and, uh, you know, when, when I think about the, the, the program that's going to be on there, uh, the creation of the content, the movies that they're going to run from Paramount Studios, and just the overall, you know, scheduling. It's going to be like a show. It's going to be like a Showtime at HBO, where you know you'll see Homeland, you'll see you know different entertainment products, and then uh, twice a month on a, on a Saturday or Friday night, uh, here comes the uh, Bellator MMA. We're the only sports property uh, on uh, Paramount or owned by Viacom, and I think you'll see plenty of this uh, on uh, the Paramount Channel moving forward. Okay, so let's stick with the TV theme here for a second. Uh, some big news. Uh, Jimmy Smith gone, replaced by Big John McCarthy. And, of course, you still have Mike Goldberg and Morrow doing play-by-play. Che will still do his thing, and he'll he'll split that time, or sometimes there'll be a three-man booth. Can you tell us why Jimmy Smith is no longer with Bellator? Why the decision to not extend that contract? Mm. Um, you know what? That was really a, a TV decision. That's something that maybe you should come to uh, come to the press conference on Thursday, and John, and John Sluss will be there, and you could ask oh. him. Uh, but you know, it's uh, it's really it was a network decision. It was uh, you have no you have no was, say in um, this. Some, I mean, look when we were with Showtime, I didn't go ask David Dinkins, oh, can so and so be a commentator or, or a play by play guy? It was like, hey, th- here here's the team, and that's what it is. And TV traditionally handles you know the broadcast part of that, and uh, and I'm happy that they do. It's like uh, something that uh, that they're very good at, and and. and uh, you know, they felt that they wanted to move forward in a different direction, and that's what they did. I, I have a hard time believing that they don't ask you for your opinion. You are the guy. You're the head honcho. You run that place. <laughs> Come on. Oh, Errol, you know what? It's like, listen, honestly, it's, uh, uh, you know, I don't, I don't think that, uh, you know, when when you're at HBO or you're, you're at Showtime, you're asking, you know, Steven Espinos, I want this guy to be a color commentary guy or, or a play Yes, you player. are. I mean, you know, the network... Then the network basically dictates, dictates you know, who the, who the guys are. Okay, okay. So then, um, let me ask you about the decision to bring in Big John. Did you have anything to do with that? And if you didn't have anything to do with that, what do you think of it? Well, what it did was, um, they said, well, you know, you know, who the, the likely candidates, and I said, hey, this is something you guys should look at because I saw Big John at the um, at the uh, Fletcher show back yeah. in the day, and he did a great job. And I always, and that always stuck in my mind. And I said, who has better credibility and respectability and knowledge and, and firsthand knowledge and knowledge that other fight or other, um, you know, color commentary, uh, candidates wouldn't have. And that's somebody that's been in a cage that has seen all different sides of it. And, uh, and it's like, it's like, it's like a rules director for the, for the sport. I mean, you, you can't get, you can't get better than the credentials that big John has and where really proud to have him on board and, and I'm looking forward to uh, him doing his thing on Saturday night. In a perfect world, Scott, would you rather not be on the same night as the UFC or do you think that this plays perfectly in, in your favor because you're on cable television so for most people, you know, free because Spike is or Paramount, soon to be Paramount is, is available if you just have basic cable and, and, and they're on pay-per-view so you can affect their pay-per-view buys. Do, do you view it that way or would you rather be separate, you know, Friday, Saturday type of thing? 
I mean, I, I think if you look at our past history, uh, we have traditionally done, I would say, 80% of our shows on a Friday night. Yeah. And happy to do shows on Friday night. Uh, it's just that, you know, we have a business to run, they have a business to run, and this is a fight that uh, just happened to conflict. And we didn't know when we booked the date, that the one that they did have a date or they had a, a pay-per-view date. Uh, we just said, hey, this is the date that's only available, uh, that's open for Paramount. And uh, it's a launch of the network. It has to be on this weekend. And, uh, you know, the venue was available. And the venue happens to be in California, which we, we're not going to go on a Friday night in California, which, you know, be a terrible mistake. And so we, we said, hey, let's just go on Saturday night. And then it ended up being going head to head. But listen, that's, that wasn't something that was planned. We're not, uh, we're, we're not that company where, you know, we're going to be targeting different events. We're just going to go do our own thing, run our own business. And uh, it is, this one just happened to uh, have, a, have a conflict. I'm curious as, as to why you said that going on Friday in California is bad, because I remember historically, uh, I went to many Strike Force shows on a Friday night in California. Why, or do you mean Los Angeles? No, no. Uh, you know, the fights that you saw on Friday night were like the Strike Force Challenger fights, and then Saturday nights were always the championship fights. No it's way, like, Scott. What are you talking about? Old age has gone into your memory. Are you kidding? I saw Bobby Southworth fight for the belt in on a Friday night. I'm talking old trade. Josh Thompson versus Gilbert Melendez was on a Friday night in in, in San Jose, my first ever strike force oh, event. No, you- no, no, no. I'm, 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 talking about, I'm talking about once we, we came up to Showtime. Oh, okay. I'm talking about the old days. I'm reminiscing here. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's tough. On a Friday night in L.A., trying to get to the traffic to get to the venue. Oh, I it's see. It's a tough day. Okay, because so, of traffic. Yeah, same thing okay. with the Bay Area. Trying to get anywhere in the Bay Area on a Friday night is really, really tough. And, uh, you know, I think prior to us becoming a TV property, we, we did some dates on Friday night. But once we went on Showtime, Showtime was like, look, Friday nights are challenger dates. And that's where that's where Luke Rockhold, uh, that's where Daniel Cormier, that's where Wanda, that's where, you know, Cyborg. That's what all. That's where all these challengers will fight for strike force, if you can believe it. That's uh, right. Yeah, I'm, that's I'm, crazy. I'm just throwing some names out there. And then, <laughs> and the championship fights were you know, the Frank Shamrocks of the world, the Nick Diaz of the world, you know, the, yeah. the Kung Lee's of the world, um, and uh, Cyborg actually fought on there with Gina. And, you know, those were all on on Saturday nights. So traditionally, that's kind of how uh, it rounded off uh, when, when we became a TV property. Uh, I'm. I'm- I'd be remiss if I don't ask you about this because I'm being flooded with tweets um, from fans in Europe asking me, how can they watch the show on Saturday? What can you tell these fans in the UK, especially who seem to be very upset that they can't get the shows live? Yeah, you know what? That's, you know, I, I have to look at it because I don't even know really what time we're going live there, but I will give that information to you. I will, I will circle back with uh, uh, Eddie Dalva at Bytown International. And uh, and then I'll circle back to you guys and and uh, see what the best way to watch it because it's going to be exciting. It's going to be yeah. a great night. Is that a, is that a big uh, priority for you to fix the 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 TV situation there? Because I always hear from the fans who want to watch you live, but they say they can't. The answer to that is one hundred percent. We need to fix that, and uh, you know it, it's complicated because you have a network that's you know that has the rights to it, and they have a certain day slot that they want to use it for, and they want to do it on a certain day, um, and uh, you know, and sometimes that's tape delayed twenty four hours, or that's tape delayed you know twelve hours, but fans want to see it now, and so you know we're we're, we're talking internally and we're trying to work it out. Uh, it's on a case by case basis, like I said, because uh, a lot of the networks have already tied up the rights. Uh, to a lot of the product. A few more things before I let you go. Um, the lightweight division will be in focus on Saturday. You've got the former champion Michael Chandler against Kochi Amauchi. Um, that's a big fight, but I think a lot of us expected it to be an instant rematch between Chandler and Brent Primus. They've had some back and forth. Can you clear it up? Why isn't Primus fighting Chandler for the belt next? Yeah, you know what? We actually were talking to try to put that fight together, and um, and uh, my understanding is that Primus, uh, he and his wife had a baby and that uh, he wasn't available for some amount of time and Michael wants to fight now, so we're going to put the, this fight together and then the winner will fight uh, Primus in the next fight, which, you know, we're going to try to make that happen, you know, within a short amount of time. It's not going to be uh, six, eight months down the road. Okay, so so the winner of Yamauchi and Chandler is going to fight Primus for the belt? That's correct. Okay. What other, since you're in a giving mood, what other news do you have for us? Anything else you can share? 
every, everything else is top secret. Everything it's all about the fights this Saturday. I mean, uh, live and free on Paramount. Don't forget yes. to say that already. Sorry, I, I, did. I, I, did, I didn't know if I remember to say that. Yeah. But, like it's going to be a great night of fights, and it's something we're really proud of. Top to bottom, it's a stack card. And I can tell you this: the ticket sales this year compared to Tito versus Chael, oh. we've already beat the ticket sales record we had last year. So ticket oh. sales are going extremely well, and uh, you know, uh, I think Saturday morning I got a report, and uh, we're we already beat the Tito Chael fight, and we're expecting to have a maybe you know the the you know record breaking night for us. So so that squashes the theory that you made the switch because of slow ticket sales, because I heard that as well of some people hypothesizing. Uh, you know, it's come on, that's silly. I mean, you know, we we have a business around and we're gonna stick to what we know to be, you know, sound business practices. We're not gonna react to, you know, things here and there. And uh, you know, it's it just proves that the fight card that we put together, people wanna see. And ticket sales are going extremely well. I think this will be the first. Or I think Madison Square Garden was our biggest gate. I think this will be number two. Wow. And both owned by MSG, right? So I'm sure they're very happy about that. Um, but you understand why I'm fired up. But I'm not just trying to be a stickler here. Like, I, I like I like when title fights are last. You get that, right? Yeah, but we're not the only company that has done that. I mean, you have to, you have to be fair and, and talk about all the companies that have done that before in the past. And so maybe that's, you know, that's something that... Uh, we can have an offline conversation about that. Sure. I brought up the UFC 196 thing that uh, some people in your company brought up to me, but that one doesn't fly in this discussion because uh, M- McGregor and RDA was the original main event. There was an injury, and then it got switched. There was no injury here. Oh, come on, details, details, little details. <laughs> okay. Uh, before I let you go, Listen, yes. you get to watch both fights. Yes. Both fights. Yes, and you don't have to worry about which order they're in, and they're getting, and then people are going to love it. It's going to be great fights, and uh, you know, Roy gets to sit down, fight, and then sit down and watch the, the other fight. I mean, it's going to be it's going to be a fun night, man. You know, I, I uh, I'm really really excited and to have Roy fight this fight against uh, Lima a champ. It's something that I've been looking forward to for years since we signed him. Actually, you're the one that talked me into it. Oh, I remember calling you and saying, wow. "Hey, what do you think, Ariel?" And you said, hey, this guy is the real deal. You need to get him. And that's what we did. They Wait a second. Recommendation. This, is, this is top secret stuff, Scott. You're giving away all my secrets. Well, it's, sharing is caring, Errol. <laughs> that's the way I look <laughs> at it. You called me up and said, what do I think? You guys were kind of on the fence since you're bringing it up. You were on the fence about Rory. <laughs> and I said, you're crazy if you don't sign this guy, right? That's exactly right. You know, it's, uh, it was something that uh, we want to reach out to you because I know you guys are friends and, and you know, I'm on the show a lot and you, you really knew him well. I didn't know Roy that well. And, uh, you know, I, I'm glad I reached out and he came with a high recommendation and we went out and we got him. And how do you repay me? You demote him from the main event. <laughs> There's no emotion here. It's co, it's co main event. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Um, uh, last thing for you, Scott, before you let you go, g- g- give me a great all time strike force moment. Is there anything on the five year anniversary we're reminiscing from the old days, the first ever show, Caesar Gracie, Frank Shamrock? When you think of strike force in its heyday, is there anything that comes to mind? Any moment that we haven't heard about? Anything that you really remember that really stuck with you? Oh boy, there's so many great moments and great fights and just great stories and and I know these things are on your show, so I'll share this one with you. Okay, okay. You know, uh, Bob Cook calls Bob Cook calls me and says, "Hey, I want to meet with you. I got this new I got this guy, and he's going to be your new champ and heavyweight, heavyweight champ actually at the time." And so uh, we meet at a place called Willow Street Pizza in downtown Worldwide. And uh, Bob walks in with Daniel, and uh, we're talking. And, and again, Daniel's not in shape; he's not, you know, in shape for, for fighting or anything. But he could talk. He could talk. I said, "God, you know, wow, I really like uh, like him. I think he could talk, but he doesn't look like a fighter. Are you sure he could fight?" He says, "Well, you know, I know he could wrestle, but we're going to get him in here, and we're going to, you know, we're going to make him a striker, and we're going to teach him jujitsu." And uh, and Bob goes, uh, "Yeah, okay, well, I'll be back." So Daniel and I. He had a chance to t- chat alone for about 10, 15 minutes. Uh, and then we uh, we made a deal right there. And, uh, wow. The deal was, you know, quite quite like a very conservative type deal, very beginner, you know, entry level. Uh, and then, uh, and then you know, we said, okay, let's fight this guy. And, uh, man, then he went on a tear. And then, and then he became like a kickboxer. And I'm like, wow, this guy is an amazing athlete. So I'm proud of everything Daniel's accomplished. And, it all started at Willow Street Pizza. He'll tell wow. you. Wow. What a great story. I love that. I'm, I'm going to share that with him when he comes in. 
Yeah, tell him he owes me Korean barbecue when he gets back from his fight. Oh, wow. You guys have a standing date? Well, we, we hang out once in a while. You know, he's busy. I'm busy. But listen, these, these guys, I've known these guys for a long time. Yeah, and uh, I see you still with Rockhold. I see you still golf with Rockhold. You know, we were just talking about that, right? You still, you're, you're, he's a golfing buddy of yours. <laughs> but he, he is actually quite a good golfer. It kicks my butt. So. Wow, fascinating. All right, well, we'll leave it at that. Great memories there. Um, wanted to reminisce a little bit, but I certainly wish you the best, Scott. I'm looking forward to it this Saturday. Paramount Network. Uh, the headlining act, as as we've talked about ad nauseum, it's Quentin Rampage Jackson versus uh, the one and only Chael Sonnen. Co-main event is Douglas Lima versus Roy McDonald for the welterweight title. Are we doing some kind of big, you know, reveal? I know you did a great one in New York. I remember I was there for the Strike Force Grand Prix where you brought out all the guys. Are we going to do that sort of thing in California this week? Oh yeah, you'll see all the guys. All the oh. guys are coming in from the tournament, and uh, we're gonna have a great. Uh, uh, reveal as far as we've already announced the matchups and we'll have the dates and the locations and um, you know uh, it's going to be a lot of fun we have a lot to a lot to talk about this weekend uh, alternate fights will you will you bring those out as well will you tell us who the alternates are going to be uh, the alternate fights are you know I mean we, we have some and we, we, we will reveal them on Saturday so you got to tune in okay lest we forget uh, the last time you did one of these the alternate Daniel Cormier won the whole thing right that's how it works. I mean, you know, that with these tournaments, you never know. Amazing. All right, Scott. Thank you so much. Best of luck to you guys. Looking forward to it. And, and thanks for coming on and, and uh, explaining everything. We needed your, you know, your, 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 your sound judgment here to uh, make sense of it all. We'll, we'll agree to disagree on this one. <laughs> well, listen, I'm, ha- I'm ha- happy to be on. And I've always, uh, you know, loved your show and loved your growth. And really proud of you, man. You're doing some great thanks. things and keep it up. Wait, is this it? Are you never coming back on? Oh, no, no, I will, but th- that was just my uh, giving you a nice plug. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Scott. I appreciate it. Good luck on Saturday. All right. Thanks. I thought, I thought he was saying goodbye for good. I thought that was it.